Y'all know what's going on. It's time for another episode of Doing Time with Joe. I'm your host, Joe Baker. Look here, y'all. In prison, it can pop off at any time, for any reason, anywhere. It don't matter if it's in the child hall, the gym, the unit, the cell, the shower. Anywhere, anytime, it can pop off in the penitentiary. What most people that are in prison or even the ones that work in prison, what they don't realize is that before it pops off, it's usually a buildup. It's usually a buildup, and I call that stirring the pot. And this always happens before a fight or a riot. Always. No if, and, or but. But most people are not privy to know or to be involved in the stirring of the pot to e or even to see it happening. You feel what I'm saying? But I've had a unique front row seat to a lot of the drama that goes on in prison before it pops off because of the uh, situation or the position that I used to be in when I was uh, in rotation. And for those new people to listen, when I say in rotation, I mean that when I was, you know what I'm saying, participating in uh, gang activities, right? Now, in this episode, I'm going to tell you uh, about one of those times when I was uh, privy to stirring other pot, not because I was told by these individuals that were stirring the pot, which happened to be the Aryans, but because of my experience, I was able to see and peep what was going on where they were trying to manipulate all the black and brown organizations to, well, predominantly black and brown organizations to pop it off. Because what happens in here, a lot of times, uh, the administration might make some changes uh, to the function of the prison for security reasons. You know, most of the changes are about security reasons, trying to stop killings and rapes and stop drug trafficking and stop contraband from coming into prison. So they, they'll change things up, you know what I'm saying, to throw the flow of things off in here. And that frustrates those individuals that are involved in nefarious activities to, to the point to where they start to try to plot and cause problems, thinking that that's going to cause the administration to change their mind or to change up what it is that they're trying to do. It never works. Uh, but it doesn't stop people from trying. Now, in this situation, the Aryan Nation, you know what I'm saying, they were being affected because, well, everybody that was in the, involved in nefarious activities were being affected by the changes that were being implemented by the administration. So they wanted to find a way to push back so they would be able to continue to do the things that they wanted to do, right? So in this episode, I'm going to tell you about that, right? This episode is called Stirring the Pot. So sit back, relax, y'all, and enjoy the show. Now check this out, y'all. Look here. This is what was going on. Let me give you the story, right? Uh, there was a lot of drugs coming into the institution. I'm talking about loads of it. You know what I'm saying? Weed, tobacco, cocaine, a lot of phones, a lot of contraband, right? So the administration changed up a lot of things, right, as far as when we could come out, where we could go. Because in here you have what they call, like, controlled movement, right? That means that if they have um, what they call a tier management in place, where if you're in a building, if you're in a pod, and you are on the top level, you get to come out at a certain time, and while you're out, all the other doors in the building are locked. And then when you do your hour out, then the bottom level gets to come out. That means the top level is locked. So it's kind of separating the population and limiting activity amongst the population, and then controlling when you can come out and where you can go when you do come out. And those types of things, right? So this was causing disruption in the flow of making money selling drugs and moving the contraband as far as phones and things like that, right? And it was messing up a lot of the, the money. It was messing up the money for everybody. The, the, the Bloods, the Crips, Vice Lords, GD, Aryan Nation of all different types, you know, all of the different organizations that were involved in getting their money through the black market, right? Messed up everything. So... I'm watching all of this, and it's, it's messing up the things for the for the fam, too, you know what I'm saying, in the ways that it's messing it up for everybody else. But I'm leaning back, right, and I'm watching because I'm trying to figure out, okay, these new guardrails have been put in place. How do you function? How do you play within those guardrails? 
See, that's what I learned about the game. You got to figure out how to function within the guardrails that are being put up, no matter how they're put up. It might slow things down temporarily, but at the end of the day, you have to figure out how to function. You do not run this. We have this illusion that we are in charge, and we're just not. Uh, we, we dominate the scene in here, depending on what the circumstances are, but we don't run it the way a lot of people might want to think. Because if they change a rule, we have to adapt to that rule. And if you're adapting to the rules that somebody else puts into place, are you really running something? I don't think so. But here we go. Anyway, this is my thing. The money is getting messed up. So it happens to be one day, because I'm on the top level uh, at this particular prison where this was going down years ago. And I happened to be walking by, you know, it was where the microwave is, right? And... It's a couple of white guys in there, and one of them is uh, an area nation. He's one of the middle level, middle level leaders. He's not the top one, but he has some pull. He has sway with the Aryans, right? And I'm hearing him talking to this other guy, this white guy, that the word is that he's a former member. He doesn't belong anymore to the Aryan nation, right? But I'm hearing him talking to him, and I heard him say, while I'm walking by, I heard him say, we got to get these niggas involved. So I slow down. I turn out, look over there, right? Both of them, you know, they're not looking towards me to keep, you know, an eye out in case somebody walks by. They're both, you know what I'm saying, with their back turned. So I walk by. They ain't paying no attention. You know what I'm saying? Because they're on the other side of the wall. They walk, you know what I'm saying? We got to get these niggas involved. So I slow down. And I stop far enough away that I'm not right up on them, but close enough where I can still hear. See what I'm saying? So I'm listening to him. He said, man, all the, the things that are happening, man, the administration, these motherfuckers is messing up the moves and all this and that. We got to get these niggas involved. You know, they emotional. All we got to do is get them involved. Let's kick it off. And then we lean back. And when the administration come in and get them, then we left to do what we want to do, right? Problem solved. We can get back out. They'll let us back out. Now, none of this makes sense. None of this makes sense because even if a riot popped off, we're going to be locked down for months. Nobody's going to get to do anything. Plus, they're talking about black people are emotional and all this. And it made me harken back to a conversation that I had with this white guy that I've known for several years that used to be part of the area nation that's no longer a part of those types of uh, organizations, don't participate with those people, been almost killed by those people on several different occasions. And he told me something a long time ago when he first got out. He said, Joe, he said, the garbage that they taught me he said, I was on it to the point to where I believe that it was the duty of a white man to do whatever he could to upset a black man. He said, if I was sitting at a traffic light and a black man was next to me, he said, I'd shoot him to bury because I know black people got high blood pressure problems and that'll piss him off. Or I'd mouth to him nigga and piss him off, you know what I'm saying, and then speed off. Just so they would chase after me, knowing the police going to stop them and not me. He said, I would do little stuff like that just to aggravate them. He said, because I thought that's what I was supposed to do. And it made me think, when I heard this white dude telling this other white dude that wasn't a part of every nation, that, you know, these black people, they emotional. All we got to do is send them out. Get them riled up. They'll do what we want them to do. We won't even realize it right. He said, but they're not going to listen to me. They'll listen to you. You kick it with them. So I'm like, dang, what's really going on? So I don't know that they've been talking like this for a few days. So I go into the room, now me and my silly and I, and I didn't say one word to him about it at first. And he brought it up to me. He said, Joe, let me see, let me ask you something. He said, what's up? He said, man, you know I ain't racist at all, right? I said, I know that. And no, my silly black, he black. I said, no, nah, I know that. I know that. I understand what you're trying to say. You know what I mean? I said, but get to it. What's, what's up? He said, man... And these white dudes around here, man, they've been talking all this mess, you know what I'm saying, on the low, thinking don't nobody know, trying to get trying to get the black people around here fired up so we can kick something off. I said, really now? I said, man, I just heard one of the aliens down there talking to the white dude. Now, this particular white dude that I'm talking about, that's who uh, my Sally say he heard telling the black dude, you know what I'm saying, that this bull crap that the administration doing, we can't stand for this. I said, really now? He was like, yeah, he said, and you know, because this white dude that I'm talking about, y'all, he goes to church faithfully. You know what I'm saying? And as far as I knew and anybody else knew, he just wasn't on it. 
he always talked about you know doing the right thing and 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 and, and believing in the most high and 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 being forgiving and all this and that but now he's in collusion with this Aryan dude trying to incite us to do something and I'm like wow this is amazing and when I tell him about that conversation he leans back he said what I'm like yeah I just heard him the Aryan dude telling him man we gotta get these niggas riled up and get them to do something and that's stirring the pot y'all stirring the pot so the more I walked around and after after the count anyway I'm out and about and I'm hearing more brothers starting to get agitated. And they're saying, man, we can't put up with we can't put up with this, 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 and that. And I'm saying, what's going on? All this old lockdown and this tier management and all this and that. I said, man, look here, hold up a second. Let me tell you something. I said, why are you freaking out about this? This is nothing new at all. Nothing new. And he said, Man, look here, man. If we keep on standing for this, man, then they're going to come and do the next thing and the next thing. I said, who told you that? Who told you that? And he said, me and brother were talking this and that. I said, who is brother? And guess who he pointed out? The white dude that was talking to the area. I said, did he? I said, what else did he tell you? He said, man, he said, if we don't stand for something, we'll fall for anything. All these old cliches cliches and that you say to people that really don't want to think it through. Now they've talk, they're talking to GD, they're talking to Vice Lord, they're talking to Blood, they're talking to Crip, they're talking to the right people that if they decided to kick it off, it could get ugly. It could get ugly. And then I said to myself, before I said to him, I was like, this fool don't see it. So I tell him, I said, look man, this is what I need you to do. Go get cuz and them, go get blood and them, go get the vice lords and everything. Y'all tell them to come to the house. I need to see everybody, all the heads. So they all come to the cell and I'm sitting there talking. The ones in the pod with us anyway. You know what I'm saying? We in the room. I said, look here, let me tell y'all something. I said, I can't tell nobody in here what to do. Y'all know that. Everybody do what they do in their own organizations, right? But I said, I'm going to tell you what we're not going to do. We're not going to be sent out by no Aryan nation. That's what we're not going to do. They said, what you talking about, Joe T? I said, how many of y'all have been talking to, and I called the brother, not the white dude's name, I said, this white dude that's been telling y'all that we need to do something about all the changes to the administration. How many of y'all been listening to that? How many of y'all have had that kind of conversation? Every one of them said they had. I said, now let me tell you what I stumbled upon. Then that's when I told him, I stumbled upon a conversation that he was having with one of the Aryan Nation about, we got to get these niggas around here riled up. I said, they all looked at me and said, nah, nah. I said, yeah, yeah. I said, yeah, that's what's going on. I said, here's the thing. If we're going to do something, let it be because we're standing on something. But I said, but let's keep in mind, man, this is not going to solve a thing for us. The reason they locking everything down is because we are not going about this thing the right way. It ain't no right way to do wrong. That's one thing I wanted them to understand. But if we were going to do this, we can't do it in a way to where everybody's fighting and beating up each other and all this and that. We got to make sure that the administration believes that ain't nothing going on or they going to keep it locked down. But us starting a riot ain't going to benefit nobody. Nobody. And I said, and if you do decide to pop it off, uh, we not with you. Most definitely not behind somebody in the Aryan Nation organization gassing it up. So now they all mad because they've been tricked. Now they want to do something to them. I said, nah. I said, one thing we don't do. We don't let the right hand know what the left is doing. You feel me? So that's not what we're going to do. We're not going to let them know that we know what they're doing. When they come around and try to have them kind of conversations, flip it. Flip it back. And you need to tell them, I say, man, look here, man. If they come to you and say, man, we need to pop something out, you tell them they pop first. If they pop first, then you follow up. But other than that, tell them ain't nothing popping off. You're not finna be doing all that. You feel what I'm saying? So they were like, yeah, that's the, that's the business. That's what we're going to do. So when they started doing that, now all of a sudden you see the white dude that's not Aryan, he going back to the one that is Aryan, and he was like, man, they ain't going. 
They want us to pop it off. Because they don't want to pop it off. They want us to pop it off so they'll get rid of us. And then they got the whole compound to themselves to get their bread. That's just one of the ways that people manipulate in here. It's always the potential for something to happen. But you got to be careful most of the time as to why it's happening. Ain't nothing you can do in the penitentiary about the rules that's being put down. But what you can do is dictate how you respond to them. And if you're not careful, in most situations in here, you'll find yourself responding to them in a way that benefits some other organization, especially an organization that don't care nothing about you. And I'm breaking all of this down to them. So now they start to understand and they start to see what's really going on. And now, everybody's in agreement. Man, we're going to just let it do what it do, man. Ride this out. If they leave it like, it, like this, they leave it like this. If they change it, they change it. But I wanted to let you know that because of this, y'all. I wanted to let you know that because of this. Again, if you're trying to live that rah-rah life, you're going to find yourself in a situation where you can be manipulated by, and you might not believe it. You might not believe something like this can happen. But you'll find yourself being manipulated, being like the puppet master is the area nation and you just being pulled on the string and you don't even realize. Why are you doing what you're doing? It makes me think about the dope game on the streets. Everybody knows, now, now look here, all of y'all out there getting your bread, don't get mad at me, but I'm finna say something that you might not like because I want you to think about you know, why you do what you do and who's probably pulling the strings. We all know how cocaine got brought into this country, how it was put into the neighborhoods, how it was distributed and all this and that, right? Yet, we continue to do it. Who is it benefiting? Who is it benefiting? It's destroying our neighborhoods. It's destroying the country. Not just the neighborhood, the country. We got people ODing and dying every day. Because a handful of people decide they want to be rich. White, black, purple, or blue. Who is it benefiting? It don't benefit you when your whole neighborhood is falling down no den. You might think it does, but it don't. And when they hit you with that life sentence for that murder, for somebody old den, and you come up in here, then you're going to continue to be manipulated by somebody that you can't see. Because you're not smart enough to understand what's going on. And I stumbled up on this. I stumbled up on somebody plotting to get us to do something that would have caused us harm. The games are still being played, y'all. The games are still being played. And I just wanted you to understand, you know what I'm saying? That's just another example of what goes on in these places. Manipulation at its highest levels by the people that are sworn to hate you. They'll try to play you because they say you're too emotional. You don't think things through. So watch yourself. Watch yourself. And it, But here, hold up. Let me say this before I go. Let me say this before I go. Black people ain't above manipulating too now. Are we good at it? We good at it too. We'll send them out. But what I'm trying to get people to understand is why do we have to keep doing that to each other? We need to quit that. We need to quit that. It ain't benefiting nobody. Not us. Not us. it has been another episode of Doing Time with Joe. I'm your host, Joe Baker. And I say peace, y'all.